Dear students, now we are going to discuss the features and architecture of programmable interrupt controller in detail. 8259 is a programmable interrupt controller designed by Intel Corporation for 8085 and 8086 microprocessors. In general, 8085 processor has 5 hardware interrupts, 8086 has 2 hardware interrupts. Okay. So next we are going to discuss the features of 8259. This 8259A can manage 8 priority interrupts. It is available as 28 pin dual inline package IC. It requires plus 5 volt power supply for its operation. It is used to locate the vector table for the interrupts in the memory location. That means this programmable interrupt controller is used to locate the vector table. That means the address for each interrupt in the memory map. So it can be programmed to accept either the level ticket or the edge ticket interrupt request. It can provide the information of pending interrupts, in-service interrupts and masked interrupts. So all the interrupt related informations can be controlled by this programmable interrupt controller 8259. Okay. It is designed to handle the multi-level priority interrupts. By cascading 9 AICs, we can increase the priority interrupts up to 64. So actually a single IC can control 8 priority interrupts, we can increase the count by cascading the 8259 ICs, okay. So here the clock cycle is not required for its operation. It minimizes the software and real-time overhead in interrupt control. So it is a programmable one, so we can easily control that interrupt. So there is no software overhead problem, okay. This is the pin diagram of 8259A. It is a 28 pin dual inline package IC, 14 pins in each side. So here the 14th pin is grounded, 28 pin is VCC that is plus 5 volt power supply. Okay. Then we have chip select bar, write bar, read bar and A0. This four are the control signals from the processor. Okay. Then we have eight data lines. Okay. So this all are the eight data lines. Then we can have CAS0, CAS1 and CAS2. That is cascading connection 0, 1, 2. So these three pins are used to cascade that 80 to 59 ICs. Okay. Then we can have eight interrupt request lines. So these lines are used to control that priority interrupts. Okay. So next INTA bar means it is the interrupt acknowledgement from the processor. INT that is interrupt request from this 8259 to the processor. Okay. The next one is B bar, EN bar that is slave program or enable buffer. So this is also used to, to enable the cascading operation. Okay. So next the connection between 8086 and 8259. Here the processor 8086 is connected with this 8259 through this data lines and whenever there is an interrupt request from this 80 to 59 it can send this INT signal to this 8086. If the processor is ready to accept that interrupt then it can send that acknowledgement to this 80 to 59. This interrupt controller can control 8 interrupt request. Okay. Next we are going to discuss the architecture of 80 to 59. It has important functional units, data bus buffer, read write logic, cascade buffer, control logic, priority resolver and three important registers, interrupt service register ISR, interrupt request register IRR, interrupt mask register IMR. There is an internal bus which is used to connect the functional units of this 8259 with the system bus of the processor. Let's discuss each block in detail here. Data bus buffer is a 8-bit bidirectional buffer which is used to transfer the data 
control word and status information between the processor and this interrupt controller okay so next read write logic unit it has four input signals from the processor read bar write bar a0 cs bar here this a0 is the address line next cascade buffer so this buffer is enabled whenever we are going to cascade an additional 8259 with this ic okay so it has three enabling signals cas0 cas1 cas2 and also sp bar en bar so this is very very important to decide the slave program or enable that buffer okay so next one is control logic unit this unit is going to send the interrupt request to the processor and also to get the acknowledgement so based on this request it can activate the registers okay so next priority resolver it is going to maintain the priority for each interrupt levels and also to execute the highest priority first okay so based on the priority it can execute that interrupt request and this interrupt service register is used to store the interrupts which are in service in the processor here it is interrupt request register it is used to store all the interrupts which are requesting for that interrupt service to this 80 to 59 okay so initially it is having a interrupt request okay then interrupt mask register it is used to store the interrupts which are to be masked by storing the masking bits of the interrupt so if you want to mask any interrupts we can mask it and those information can be stored in this interrupt mask register so here functional units of 80 to 59 data bus buffer read write control logic control logic unity resolver cascade buffer three registers interrupt request register interrupt service register and interrupt mask register okay data bus buffer is a 8 bit bidirectional bus which is used to transfer the data control word and status information between the processor and the interrupt controller it also allows the interrupt controller to send the interrupt request and also the address of the interrupt service routine to the processor okay so next read write logic control unit there are four control signals from the processor to this interrupt controller read bar write bar a0 and chip select bar so these three bits are used to select the operation of this 80 to 59 if the combination is 0 10 data from cpu can be written to this 82 59e if the combination is 0 01 it can read the data from 80 to 59 to cpu so if the combination is 1 10 it can write command word to this 80 to 59e if it is 1 01 it can read status information from 80 to 59 if a0 is equal to 0 it can represent the data values if it is equal to 1 it can represent command word or status information okay so next one is chip select signal it is an active low signal so whenever the signal is logic 0 that 80 to 59a is enable to process the interrupt okay so next one is control logic so this control logic unit is used to control the enabling disabling operation of this interrupt request this control unit has one input acknowledgement signal inta bar from the processor and one output signal int that is the interrupt request to the processor okay so next three registers right interrupt request register it is used to store all the interrupt levels which are requesting for the interrupt services interrupt service register it is used to store the interrupts which are currently being executed which are in service okay so those interrupts can be stored in this so next one is in is interrupt mask register it stores the interrupts which are to be masked by storing the masking bits of that interrupt levels okay so the, the next one is priority resolver it is used to determine the priorities of the interrupt levels in interrupt request register so it is mainly used to execute the highest priority interrupt first okay so according to the priority level the highest priority interrupt is set in this service register next one is cascade buffer in order to increase the interrupt handling capacity to 64 levels 
980 to 59 ICs are cascaded with each other. That means we can cascade 980 to 59 chips like this. Okay. So here the first one is called as master 80 to 59. Okay. The remaining chips are called as slave. So here these three pins are used to enable or disable each 80 to 59 ICs. For a master 80 to 59, these pins are used as output pins. For the slave, these pins are used as input pins. Okay. So here this signal is very, very important to enable this cascade buffer. So this SB bar slash EN bar, that is slave program or enable buffer. So in case of master, it should be logic 1. In case of slave, 80 to 59, it should be grounded. That is 0.